Hello and welcome everybody to another pre-modern video. Today we're going to be playing a deck that I've been interested in for a while. I've been saying that I was going to make a video on this deck, but I just didn't didn't come around to something else more interesting that would often show up. Uh, but we're finally going to give it a shot. This is Mono Red Sly, Burn, however you want to call it. Red Deck Wins. All of the names are valid and uh, this is a very, very powerful strategy. Probably one of the best decks in the format and it has been for a very long time at this point. Uh, but this is a tried and true Mono Red Deck. This is one of the, the OG. It's trying to, to play some of the cards that the, the very, very first versions of, of, of this deck used to play. Uh, this is um, a deck that is very interesting and a lot more dynamic and harder to play than most people give it credit for. Uh, Mike Flores actually wrote a fantastic article on this very archetype that it's called the Three Gears, and uh, you can find it online somewhere, most likely. Uh, very, very good read. I highly recommend you you give it a shot. And uh, yeah, this deck is a bunch of cards that deal damage and go to the face, and then we're sometimes going to be throwing them out at our opponent's faces, uh, very often, and then some other times we're going to have to pivot and we're going to try to throw it at our opponent's creatures or like something else. So uh, we have uh, who's who of all of the best uh, burn spells in the format. We have four lightning bolts, four shocks, uh, four incinerates, four fire blasts. These are all of the spells that go straight straight of face. Then we have our repeated um, um, damage sources, that is our creatures in uh, Mog Fanatic, Jackal Pop, and Grim Lava Mancer. And then uh, Sulfuric Vortex is another repeating damage source that is actually very, very important in certain matchups. A very strong card. Uh, we also have three copies of Bolt Lining. This is a creature, but it's not actually a repeating uh, damage source. It just comes down, it hits for six, and then it just dies. That's that's the strategy here. Uh, then well, the, the interesting uh, aspect that this deck has are the two copies of Ursus Bubble. This is um, a strategy implemented in... Uh, first brought to light uh, by uh, the one and only Aaron Dix. He was the one that added bubbles to the pre-modern version of this deck. And what bubble does is it makes our deck a little bit smaller. And then it also um, fuels Grim Lava Mancer. It fuels Barbarian Ring, which we also have a couple of copies of. So it does some stuff in terms of helping us uh, just... Uh, run through our deck and like draw through our deck a little bit quicker and try to you know try to do that obviously it has some disadvantages against the sphere of resistance uh, deck for example the pain where mana for bubble is not where you want to be and it has you know uh, there's also the fact that you know you may need that very last burn spell in order to kill your opponent and then you you know you bubble them and you draw like a creature and then you die so that kind of stuff uh, may happen but overall uh, i have heard very good things about uh, the bubble and obviously like the information is not trivial right like if you happen to reveal a card from your opponent that could matter it can be very valuable information finally to round things out we have a curse crawl which is a sort of a weird card in this deck like obviously it deals damage so like in that sense it makes it, it it is logical but on the other hand what this does is it actually allows us to play more of a control role, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, finally, we have a single copy of Phyrex Furnace, which may look a little bit awkward, and maybe it is. Uh, maybe this should just be yours as bubble number three. But I've heard about uh, folks trying out multiple copies of Phyrex Furnace, of course. Uh, Iron Lungs is the one that has been uh, doing a lot of this and having success with it. I Last I heard, he was not super high on it anymore, but still, I wanted to give it a shot. I wanted to see how good this was. Uh, but yeah, I'm very well aware that it's possible that the third copy bubble would be the better alternative here. Uh, the one uh, card that I forgot to point out is a Lava Dart. This is a card that goes face, but it's actually a card that more often than not will end up going to creatures. There's a ton of uh, one uh, toughness creatures that are extremely important in this format. Stuff like, you know, obviously uh, something like Goblin Lackey is the, the number one, but obviously any number of elves and wire with symbiotes and stuff, uh, things like Mother of Runes, all of these cards can be particularly important and uh, Lava Dart answers them in a very, very clean uh, fashion while also being an absolute an absolute banger in the sideboard when your opponent is going to have ball linings and stuff and by just throwing a Lava Dart at their face in the earlier turns, it can allow us to, uh, from there on, simply tap out, uh, tap out at our just 
at our leisure because we are not threatened by a lightning ball lightning actually killing us on the crackback so that's uh, that's uh, also a very important uh, card and you will see that I, I love this card because we will see the other three copies in the cyborg as well as well as the fourth copy of uh, sulfuric vortex and the third copy of curse scroll all of these cards are uh, ones that i want to have access to more numbers in post cyber the game in certain matchups then we have cards like power blast and red elemental blast obviously these cards are just uh, spectacular cyber cards and they're the best at dealing with blue decks specifically four copies of price of progress uh, i am partly <laughs> uh, i am partly uh, part of the reason why the oath terror decks are very popular right now so a uh, price of progress is just straight up the best card in that matchup and um Overload, uh, which I'm packing two copies of here, which in Spike Colony, the Spike Colony podcast, which you, if you haven't checked out, I highly recommend you do so with uh, Mike Flores and Lani Huang, and which I was a guest of, uh, I think the latest episode or the previous to latest episode. Um, Overload is a card that people have been hating on, and because it only kills Dreadnought specifically, so if you're trying to kill Dreadnought specifically, then Mox Salvage is the better card, like no arguments there. But uh, what I'm going to argue is that there's not only Dreadnought that you want to be killing anymore. There are cards like Mox Diamond, there are cards like, uh, most notably, Sphere of Resistance, that are particularly good against uh, this burn strategy, and I would know that myself. <laughs> I have been beating burn with the terrible uh, the, the Terra, uh, Oath deck almost solely on the back of Sphere of Resistance, so having access to Overload to slow that down, or even cards like Suranorb, can be extremely, extremely impactful. So I'm going to be playing a couple of copies of Overload. Notably, for the sideboard, we don't have copies of Anarchy or something like um, Flaring Pain. These are cards that we have seen in the cyborgs of decks like this in the past, uh, particularly to beat cards like um, Circular Protection Red and things like Solitary Confinement or Worship. So uh, we don't have access to that here, but uh, we have access to the third copy of Curse Scroll, so that is trying to to beat a little bit uh, the decks that are trying to fight us on that axis, while at the same time we can just like run them over before their engine comes online, right? Like that's the other strategy that we have access to. So yeah, super stoked to try this deck out. I've been thinking about this one for a while, so very excited to give it a shot finally. Hopefully you will enjoy this trip with me. If you do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you for round number one. All right, round number one. I think this is probably a key. We don't have enough burn to kill my opponent outright, but uh, this gives us a good amount of board control and feel like I would want something like a fire blast maybe. Okay, we're gonna be on offloading our spells in quick succession here. Uh, last time I played against uh, Pietro, he was playing Mono Blue Shrimp, so I'm going to assume that's what he's playing. Here, I'm definitely gonna run a spell into days because if he just stays is here, then that's effectively a time walk for us. So I'm down. Yeah. Okay. I'm 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 very much okay with this. So now he still goes to this card, right? And not only that, but we also just delayed. Also, it would have been nice to draw land there, but fortunately we didn't. I think I want to just attack here, and then I can just bold plus shock. I am going to do this now, though. Well, he doesn't have any lands in play, so this means next turn I get to just he can't drop a shrimp. We know that. So now, yeah, he doesn't do anything that turn. That's great. And now we get to Lava Dart. Then deal two. He goes down to... Yeah, we're gonna Lava Dart plus Shock with Grim Lava Mancer. There's the Dreadnought. Lava Dart face. Grim Lava Mancer. Deal two. Now, Bloodstained Mire. It's kind of a good draw. So we don't get to Bow Lining here. We do get to Shock plus Lava Dart, plus Fire Blast while he's tapped out though, which is very nice. So I do think I want to do that. So we're going to shock his face, and we're going to do this right now. He goes on one, and now the question is... Okay, he just packs it in. Uh, like, I don't actually need to Lava Dart there, but was probably going to anyway. So now we're going to be playing against Dreadnought. We want all of these cards, and I don't want the Furnace. Don't love Bolt Lining either. Maybe I should just be cutting the Vortexes. Yeah, I'm gonna be cutting the Vortexes. Three mana is just way too much. We have all of our cheap spells. Don't love Curse Scroll, don't love Lava Dart, but c'est la vie, I guess. Cinerate, Bull Lining, Fire Blast. I think this is the setup that I want. This deck really has a lot of 1-drops. <laughs> Let's go with this. I don't love the Bull Lining particularly on the draw, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm gonna keep this. 
The question is going to be whether I think I want to just play Jagalpop on turn one. If he has a turn two combo, that's just how it goes. But like, I'm going to get dazed anyway. And I need to put on the pressure on him. I don't think I can really afford to just hope that it works out. Okay, slide a hand. Yeah, this is this is good for me. He's probably looking for a land here, I would assume. It's another portent. I think I'm going to be using foot heals here. Just fetch. Maybe I should have fetched first turn to play around the potential stifle. Now this is a very real question whether I play pop on turn two. I would love to find an overload. I think that's pro probably the best draw, I would imagine. Ball lining. Don't love that. We're singing for two here. That part is that part is fine. So now the question is, if, do I play around days? Because it's my only answer to Dreadnought. The question is, does ball lining allow me to raise my opponent? And I don't think it does. I do think that I need to put more pressure into play. Uh, I mean, this is the problem of being on the draw against the Dreadnought deck, right? This is just the way the cookie crumbles here. Obviously, my opponent could have something like... Um, yeah, them having stifle, it's also... Oh, I also just misclicked through the Red Elemental Blast. Whoops. Yeah. Well, we're, we're dead now. <laughs> we're very dead now, now that I misclick there. I may still find Overload here, so I'm not just packing it in. If I drew exactly Overload off the top, we may have a game. Point obviously attacks, another incinerate their face, and we untap, and Overload? No, another land. On to game three. Being on the play... I don't think really changes anything for me. I think this is still the setup that I want. So we have an awkward draw. I guess I keep this. It is very much what I would consider an awkward draw though. Um, I will just shock main phase here. It, it, this hand is pretty good at just not dying, but it, it's not very good at killing my opponent, which is a little bit awkward. That helps. So let's go with that. My opponent may, ha may have Hydroblast here, which would be a little bit annoying. Okay, that's good. Can we draw a low drop here? No low drop. The question is, do I want to just like jam ball lining? Because I don't think it's getting that much better. So I think I'd rather just use my opponent's mana here. I mean, this card is just so bad in the matchup, right? I guess just running into a counter spell every single time. It's so bad. But I need to put these cards into my graveyard. And the fact that I do have the overload in, in play allows me to just choose when I want to fight this fight here. And I'm going to want to fight this fight right now. Fire Blast is not awful. So let's just overload right now. And then we're gonna rev whatever they use to, to attempt to protect this. Hydroblast. Counter the Hydroblast. This allows us to play around days. My opponent could have foil. Gush. Can we dodge? I mean, they need to have it right now. I think I, I probably win if they don't have exactly foil right now. And they have it. Pitching a second gush. And now we ship the turn back. Not much we can do. So we're gonna take 12. <laughs> and what we can do here is we can just fire blast and Barbarian Ring, but it doesn't really do anything. So I can deal two plus four. My opponent targeted me with the portent. So we're taking 12 down to six and we're going to untap, swing. My opponent's gonna be going down to six. Yeah, well, there you go. I don't think there's too much for me to do there, unfortunately. This matchup is pretty bad. And when I draw five lands and my opponent finds multiple gushes, it's really, really hard to offset that. I do think my play was fine. Like having access to ball lining would not have changed the race here, unfortunately. My opponent just had turn two combo with Stifle every single time, uh, every single game that we lost. And that is how we lose, right? If, if I had been able, if they had had Vision Charm even, that would have made things a little bit better for me because that would have allowed me to at least get one more hit in. But the fact that the Dreadnought also stayed back to block means that just racing is straight up impossible. So, um, but yeah, there you go. All right, didn't quite get there. Uh, see you for the second round. Round number two. This hand looks fine. The question is whether we want to lead on Grim Levamancer or Mog Fanatic. I think I want to lead on Grim so that turn two I can go potentially Mog into something else. Alternatively, I can just go Incinerate, Exploration, and Windswept Heath. Okay, so I think we're going to just Bloodstain Mire into Mog here. We may be playing against Oath. I guess that actually it would have been better. No, never mind. Because I was thinking it would have been better potentially to have to have played the basic instead of the fetch, so I don't grow a terror but I can just make the terror smaller anyway with Grim Lion Monster, so doesn't really matter. Fetches for a basic. And what is this? Our Gothian Enchantress. Okay. So it's gonna be a race then. We're racing to my opponent not finding library is pretty good for them. We're racing towards my opponent not finding Solitary Confinement. So let's go... <clears throat> I guess it's more mana efficient for me to play Mog Fanatic here. 
and incinerate. Nah, that's just not true. Let's just go with ball lining. So the reason uh, that I was thinking about that is that I'm, I may not be able to get the two activations that I want from the Grim Devamancer. That was the idea there. So next turn I have four, five, six, seven, eight. One down to one. It's not great. Also, I'm quite far away from this bar Barbarian Ring doing anything at all, so that part sucks. I mean, there's only one, two cards that matter. Worship and Soldier Confinement. Everything else is fine. Opponent fetches. That's an important point of damage. That's a presence into a land and another presence. Draw two, three mana floating. Exactly enough to play a solid dark confinement here. Seal of cleansing. I think we're in the clear. I guess my opponent could still go Sura Sanctum into... Oh, they took a point. That's big game. Okay, so we ping down to six. We ping down to five. We have exactly enough. So Grim Lava Master down to 5, ping down to 4, down to 3, incinerate. We also have exactly enough mana. You'll love to see it. Mock Fanatic, ping your face, and Grim Lava Master, you. Woof! Dodge that one. Okay, now what? Um, hmm. These cards don't do much. I think I'm just racing here. Am I might just bring in Price of Progress just for cheese potential? Man, this is the kind of. This is the kind of situation, like, I don't think, like, Curse Scroll is probably worse than Price of Progress. Curse Scroll does play around Circle Protection Red, though. So maybe that by itself is enough for me to want to have access to it. So I don't want Furnace. I guess I'm going to bring in the cop, the Curse Scrolls, and then a couple of Pops. My opponent's going to have access to a bunch of basics, but Price of Progress has the potential of dealing 4 damage if they have, like, Sarah Sanctum and something else. I do wonder whether that is better than a Shock. Probably better than a land on the draw. I'm going to be to be bringing in the, the land on the play though. This hand looks fine. Yeah, this looks serviceable. Point and keep seven. Very scary. Would love to find <clears throat> maybe Jackal Pup off the top. Turn one exploration, once again, pretty strong. Not having access to something like a power class is a little bit annoying. Opponent shows Enchantress's presence. Here goes a Grim Lovemancer. Lightning Bolt. Something that goes to the graveyard, so that's nice. Wild Growth into Enchantress. Incinerate, not quite what the doctor ordered. I do think... Hmm, do I incinerate here or do I curse scroll? That's pretty interesting, actually. This would be a land, by the way. This would be another Vibrion Ring, so... I guess it could be. Maybe it's not. But something to keep in mind. I think I want to play the most mana and efficient card here. It's been... My curve has been very awkward. There's a brush land, okay. I like that. But I don't want to like play out the curse scroll just yet. Because of if I do that and my opponent has a seal of cleansing, then that's pretty bad for me. There's the presence. Into exploration. Draw two. Pretty good. Pretty good. We're not looking great. Not looking super hot here. Incinerate face. Untap. Jackal pop. I mean, I think I have to go for the pop here. And then lava man on end step. I have to deal the most amount of damage from colored sources. Though I do think my opponent is just gonna set up confinement here, so I think we are just not fast enough. I mean, it's turn four and my opponent's still at a virtual 13 here. I don't think that's gonna be enough. He left on the grass. It's pretty bad for me. Super stuck on mana. Untap, shock and bolt. Price of progress not doing much. Light and tutor into confinement. I don't think I can win anymore. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pack it in. And let's bring in Barbarian Ring and cut the price of progress when we're on the play. And I think that's it. And our goal is to just attempt to race. Uh, we have no redundant sources of damage here, but I think I'm still going to keep this. We have three on turn one, three on turn two, that's six plus 12. Yeah, I think I keep this. And once again, keep seven. Bubble, Revealing Seal of Cleansing. So I'm gonna have to send back this Curse Scroll. That's a shock. And I don't think there's really any upside in leaving with the smaller damage spell. I think I'm just going to Bolt Face, Untap. It's a Mountain. Gonna fetch. Would love to see a Fire Blast. Fire Blast would be a nice draw. And then fetches on end step. I'm gonna Tutor for Confinement. So they can just make the combo happen here which is turn two Enchantress into turn three Confinement. I don't think I can beat that. Not with my current setup, at least. So they can just play Confinement and I die. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, not much I can do. Uh, confinement prevents damage 
and Vortex just doesn't really work well <laughs> against it. <laughs> they do need to play the Confinement right now, though. So they're going to need to be able to chain spells from here on. Incinerate. I think I play out the Vortex. It uses my mana and it, it forces my opponent to like, do stuff. Discard and Replenish. So we know they have Seal of Cleansing. If they have second... Oh, that's okay. So that's that's probably going to be enough. So I need it for them to not have a second Enchantress effect. So this way I, you know, I tap out for the Vortex and I put it into play. I'm, gonna, I'm effectively saying, okay, you can you can kill me now, right? Like you, you, you need to like set up your combo now. You need to set up shop right now and you cannot whiff because otherwise this is going to deal you damage. And like the damage that it deals to me, it literally doesn't matter whatsoever. So I think it's correct to like tap out for the Vortex there. And this also means that I, if the opponent does whiff, then we do get to untap and just have enough burn to kill them. But yeah, doesn't look like we're going to be able to get there. Yeah, at this point, very unlikely that my opponent will whiff. We were a bit in cup red though. We were beating cup red for what's worth, but we cannot beat confinement in this in this setup. They can technically still whiff. They can technically still whiff. So they need to have you know some draws that that go pretty poorly for them. So they discard the words, and they need to have exactly like one enchantment in hand, and then like not draw one out of the next two draw steps. Once again, unlikely. <laughs> pretty unlikely but it could happen and if this falls off like they can't have a second confinement if this falls off i just kill them yeah okay so i at this point i think we're just done here i mean these are the limitations of playing the mono red deck right this kind of matchup my opponent just had they basically had a draw that i cannot realistically raise like they, i know that there's is a combination that uh, gets there on turn three that can kill my opponent on turn three I don't know what that combination is, but I don't know, maybe a miracle? Let's play for a miracle. I've seen new lists. I know Bryn was playing Pyroclasm in his sideboard when he won the event uh, this, this past weekend. So maybe that's the kind of card that we should be interested in in this list. But yeah, I know they have a Worship in hand at this point. I'm just I'm just ready to pack it up. My opponent cannot whiff anymore. All right, 0-1-2. Not, not a great first start for the, for the red deck. Round number three. Let's see if we can get a W here. So this hand is either fantastic or terrible. So I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Turn one pop. Let's do this. Wooded Foothills. Llanowar Elves. Okay. Now this is really interesting. I think I offered the trade because I have Furnace. One of does not take it. Uh, I do think that I kill this Llanowar Elf here. The question is whether I spend turn number three dropping a Vortex and just going to town. Yeah, be Maya Post. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're definitely dropping this Vortex right here. That's for sure. Is he playing Survival Opposition or something? Take two, baby. Yeah, that was a... Uh, I, I assumed that he was going to be playing Elves, but that was a very, very good Mog Fanatic right there. Also, this is going to be a pretty nice for Exit Furnace. He probably needs to get a wall into play or something like that. Super great for him. Are there any flash threats <laughs> that he could be playing? Not for two mana, right? We're gonna swing first. Oh, there we go. He already had the root while in hand. So I think I just let him block and I just let him threaten to to pump. Mm, okay, so actually, I think I need to bolt this root while right now. Otherwise, he can pump the cradle. He can use the cradle here. So this is actually pretty awkward. But I'm going to let Sulfuric Vortex do the heavy lifting here. <clears throat> Man, Rudwala such a banger. Rudwala such a banger here. Man, kind of demolished by it. Maybe I should have gone. I should have saved the ball to go face now that I think about it. If he's getting Wall of Roots, then he probably shouldn't block with both. Okay, he is blocking with both. Take two from the pups. And can I afford to... Man, can I afford to just not do anything? Because I can draw one drops here. But I guess my one drops don't really do anything into the wall of roots. So I guess I guess I'll just chill. I really need to try to get him low on mana. Which is gonna be tough when he's got a wall of roots and potentially one more backskin root walla. That's a fetch. Get the mountain. There comes the wall. This is not gonna be a squee matchup, is it? I just need to try to get my opponent dead. Yeah, I don't think they can afford to go to seven. That's like a full turn off the clock. But I need to just I need to just cycle this furnace. That's a bird. Painless mana is good for him. I guess I, my opponent has no... They don't have anger yet, and I can stop anger. So I guess I'm, I'm not supposed to just... I'm not supposed to throw the... To use the furnace quite yet. Okay, so opponent pitches squee. If 
for Vigilante. So they're setting up for next turn. Yeah, I think I'm just going after the Squee here. Meyer is terrible, really bad. Yeah, okay, so we just flooded. So I think we are, this is probably too late now. I need to find exactly Fire Blast now. I mean, Fire Blast is actually not even enough. My opponent is gonna play out Vigilante, pop it. They're gonna be at five. Yeah, like that was just devastating that we just drew two cards and they were two lands. I think we may just be too far behind now. Yeah, there's the morph. I mean, he should flip it on my turn. No reason to do it now. Just have me take one. Unless he's using the mana otherwise, which he could be. There goes the Vortex. Yeah, he is using the mana. I imagine he's gonna get Anger. Ooh, Trade Wind Rider. That's super sexy. There's Anger. So I'm dead next turn because he can just go get the Range Hermit. Can't cast it this turn. So I think I'm dead. Oh, he can get a free Rootwala and just pitch it. Oh, he only has three? Oh, no, he, he has the full playset. Okay. Yeah, he still has one on top of the bird. Yeah, I think he messed up. He could have... No, he couldn't have. Yeah, okay. So I'm dead the next turn regardless. So I guess I'm gonna fetch to thin because there's not gonna be another turn for me to do it. So actually correct for me to fetch to thin. But there's nothing I can draw anyway. So, man, that's so unlucky. Very, very unlucky. Anyway, going to game number two. Definitely won the Lava Darts. Definitely want Sulfuric Vortex. Don't think I want the pop. The question is whether I do I want Price of Progress and whether I want Pyroblast. I don't think I care about Pyroblast. Bot Lining is also potentially awkward. I am on the play though, so I think I want them on the play. Maybe a couple of shock over some Price of Progress. His mana is kind of awkward between Cradle and the Abimaya Coast, potentially Cedio Brass even. Uh, maybe shock going face, and going to a creature is just better. Let's just do this. This is a, this is a coward split right here. <laughs> this is the the official coward split. The the one price of progress three in the sideboard. <laughs> On the play, this hand is pretty spectacular, actually. Actually, it's not that good. It's just a fine hand. I do think that I'm gonna lead on foothills. I don't know if he's playing Stifle or something like that. Most to six. Would love to find Sulfuric Vortex of Kinds. Burst of Paradise. That one's dead, I think. <sighs> I could shock instead. What are the chances that this Mock Fanatic deals even more damage? I think it's actually not unreasonable that this Mock Fanatic deals more than two damage. So I think this may be okay. Maybe that's really wanna dodge a wall here. Yeah, that, that one. <laughs> really. Really want to dodge that one. Uh, second Fire Blast. Yuck. Uh, I mean, that's at least that's a lot of fodder for Lava Mancer, but I don't think I want to be doing that just yet. Let's attack there. Opponent takes the block. And I think I'm just Fire Blasting the wall, actually. I think it's really important to, to make sure that I am keeping him off of mana. I already have a second Fire Blast, so that's I think it's fine. We still have board advantage. Maybe I shouldn't have played Incinerate, actually, now that I think about it. Because playing out the Incinerate is potentially a little bit awkward. Second wall is devastating. Oof. Oh my god. Okay, so we're just going face for the rest of the game. We're just going face. Um, yeah, I just cannot keep him off. I just cannot keep him off of mana anymore. I could Bolt plus Ping, but then I still cannot get through, so... I'm going, I guess I can attack because it's free, but I'm still not going to do anything. I'm just going to shock face down to 13, down to 10. So we just pass the turn here. So the gamble on the Lava Mancer, instead of just sacrificing the Mog Fanatic for the... It, it, it definitely did not pay off. You have Maya Granger. So far, shock is exactly the same as Price of Progress. Quirion Ranger. I feel like we're just too far now. So we're just. I'm just going to start Lightning Bolt in some faces here. I don't think we can keep control of the creatures anymore. All right. I mean, my opponent's got a bunch of mana, but they're not really doing anything with it. So, <clears throat> choke you. Untap. Bobble. Okay. Let's see what the last card is. Burst of Paradise is the last card. So, I think we may be okay here. Okay. Lava Dart is just one ping. Doesn't actually do that much. So, my opponent's got a virtual seven. Yeah, they're just dead next turn. Unless they find something like Spike Feeder, which would be pretty annoying. Take three, <clears throat> they untap, replay forest, and they play Rootwalla. So Lava Man, face, Lava Dart, ping, down to seven, fetch, Lava Man, face, Fire Blast. We know the last card in hand is Adversa Paradise, so no Hydro Blast to be scared of or anything like that. Game number three, I guess we rather have the Shock and the Prize of Progress, and I think that's it. Curse Scroll is the only interesting one. Not into the ball lining at all. Maybe it's just fine. But I'm gonna be on the lookout for that. Maybe Curse Scroll is better than the ball lining. And maybe even 
Price of priority is better than the ball lining. His hand looks pretty good. I think we keep this. It's gonna be interesting whether we lava man on one or just lava dart. If they play, if, if they play dork, we just lava dart. But it's interesting. If it's a bird, I'm definitely darting root walla. Uh, I don't think I dart that one. So we're just gonna go with the the grim lava man here. Quirion. Well, we're gonna probably dart that one though. Oof, that escalated quickly. We probably have to dart now actually because it's it now it's not it's just mana which is kind of rough and if i attack my opponent's blocking so i think i'll just mock fanatic because i don't think i can really get out of that maybe it's wrong to do that but like i i feel like he has three cards in hand i need to make sure that i don't get like range hermit or something price of progress where are you <laughs> i want you now okay so we're just gonna we're just gonna start going face now um, let's play a furnace, and I think we just exile, and just ship the turn back. So opponents got a gazillion walls, but they don't have that much stuff going on. It's not bad, not bad. They're just missing survival here. Mog fanatic, it's is just equal one damage, but it's something that I can do sorcery speed. Something that I have to do sorcery speed, I guess, is what I mean. So yeah, let's just play it out, ship the turn back. We're gonna need to dodge a number of turns here because like, I, I cannot break through my opponent's defenses ever. It's gonna be a matter of exhausting, you know, going face a bunch. Second Fire Blast, not quite what the Doctor ordered, unfortunately. So send the turn back. I think this turn I want to mock Fnatic plus Shock, uh, plus a uh, Grim Lava Mancer, survival. Okay, so now is when things get pretty bad for me. On the plus side, my opponent's graveyard is pretty empty, so hopefully this furnace is gonna do stuff. Discarding birds, I imagine they're just gonna fill the board with root wallas. Anger doesn't do anything because they don't have mountain. Second root walla on to play. Masticor. Yikes. Sure thing. That's a Masticor. So I guess we're just going to shock plus lava monster activation here. So opponent down to 10, virtual 9. Virtual five. This is either a chump blocker or a mana sink. So we also have that going on. Untap another lava dart. Incinerate brings my opponent down to seven, six. So I need one more turn cycle. Here my opponent's gonna discard an upkeep. Oh no, that's bad. Oh no, they're just gonna ping. Okay, that makes sense. I thought that meant that they were gonna have access to like more things to, like more root wallas to discard to survival. Activate furnace. Oh, they did have more survival activations. For Squee. I don't think Squee is going to matter. I mean, it's just something that they get to discard to Masticor. They do get to activate a bunch there. I, I mean, my opponent should have activated and discarded Squee to go with Genesis, to go with like blah, 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 I think. So this is 10. This is a true turn clock. Wall of Blossoms. If they have Spike Feeder, I lose. Pit Genesis gets Spike Feeder. So I can bring my opponent down to two. Yeah, if I had, had, if I had drawn any land at any point, I would have won this game. Very annoying. But my opponent has a two turn clock in play, so we are just dead here. I mean, I guess I could fire blast the Masticor if I draw a bolt. Yeah, opponent just does it main face. Makes sense. Untap Mire. So, what does this, this Bloodstained Mire do? It means I'm not dead to the Root Wallace. So we exile the bird. If I exile Squee, my opponent is gonna be is gonna need to bounce something back but with Genesis, but that taps their mana and then it dies to the Masticor. So I guess I need to crack Furnace to get rid of the Squee here. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. But that gives me one more turn to try and find another basic, to try to find another basic um, mountain, I guess. So now the Masticor is gonna die or unless he Genesis back whatever, and then just discards. So that gives me a whole new turn. My, my opponent will just Genesis back the Spike Feeder. They don't, okay, so they just wanna keep the Masticor. So I'm gonna have to suck a land, I guess, which means I no longer can do the thing. Ugh, it's really annoying. So I'm taking exactly seven. Activate survival, pitch Granger. This game has been extremely close. So far my opponent has only used one of their Wall of Roots. They still have two, so killing the Masticor is not going to be particularly easy. Wall of Blossoms, opponent draws a card. Pump, Lava Dart in response. We have to do that or otherwise we die. And then we have to flashback the Dart on the other root walla. Otherwise we die exactly. I'm fortunate that we <laughs> drew the Mire. So I think we probably can't win anymore now, huh? 
Take four from Masticore. My opponent can still regenerate, so I can't Fire Blast these even if I wanted to. Grim Lavamancer is not really a blocker. Yeah, we died. Man, I feel like we were so close. I feel like we were so, so close. And we just got very unlucky game one. We flooded a little bit. And this game was just... As soon as my opponent drew the survival, that's when everything just crumbled in front of my eyes. <laughs> yeah, they just Genesis back, whatever, and then I just died. All right. Brutal. Dude, this deck sucks. <laughs> no, I, I I do feel like it's been really, really close. This this actually has been a lot of fun, even though I have not won a single match. Here we go. Round number four. Yeah, let's keep this. Probably lead on pop on turn one. Let's see what we're up against. When it moves to six, turn one, treat up village. Uh, we I guess we want to dodge. Oh, this is just... Oh, innocent blood. That's not one you see every day. I'm assuming this is the rock, some version of the rock. I guess I don't need to do this. I would be exposing myself to, uh, what's his name? Uh, the rest, stuff like that. Innocent blood is interesting. Oh, this has to be, uh, yes, this has to be like the um, gamekeeper version of the rock. I would imagine. Took my bolt. Mulch. Oh, baby. Contamination. Call of the herd. Whoa. Cabal therapy has been named. Brutal. Uh, it has been revealed, I mean. We draw a card. Vortex is not a bad draw at all. This means my opponent is going to get to take my Fire Blast because I'm not going to just throw away two lands for Incinerate. Play out the Swamp. Cabal Therapy, naming. I imagine Fire Blast, maybe Incinerate. Yeah, the name Fire Blast. But yeah, we're definitely not naming, not just, you know, using. We're not using the Fire Blast there. So take two. My opponent attacking is insanely good for me. Oof. Oh, baby. Well, this race, we are not losing. <laughs> Finally, a race we aren't losing. Great. So my opponent is dead next turn in a, in a variety of different ways. Okay, the rock. Bring this price of progress over here. Probably don't want lava darts. Maybe I want vortex. I would imagine I do. I think pop is probably fine. Curse crawl is an interesting one though. Definitely want price of progress. Maybe on the draw, cut a bull lining because I'm like, just have too many vortexes and stuff. Should I just cut Shock? Because it's the worst. I could cut a Barbarian Ring, I'm on the draw. Furnace is kind of medium. But if my opponent is indeed on Gamekeeper Rock, then Phyrex and Furnace just blanks Gamekeeper, which is pretty hot. I would have to try to not get raised by Call of the Herd tokens. Could just cut just ball linings altogether. Let's do that. On the play, ball lining becomes a lot more exciting. One lander? I'm, I ain't no coward. I ain't no coward. Turn one to rest. Probably gonna take the price of progress, I would imagine. Or now they're gonna play around it for the rest of the game. But it's not actually easy for them to play around price of progress. They showed me Wasteland, which is interesting, but uh, they definitely... They don't have an easy time playing around price of progress. Like, they need to play their treat up villages and, like, you know, they need to cast their spells, which is not necessarily easy without land war wastes and whatnot. Yeah, there's the treetop. Cabal Therapy. Probably naming Prize of Progress. We do get in there for two, which is pretty nice. Land would be great. Perfect. So I ju I'm just going to go with a little white he here. Gives me the best chance of getting value from my one drops. Duress, probably take the Incinerate. And we're going to deal five here. It's kind of a big deal. Five plus one. Ship the turn back. Definitely attacking with everything. That's an incredible draw. So now if my opponent attempts to block... We just blow them out with Incinerate. I mean, Incinerate, like Lightning Bolt, just have a lot of very good draws there. Now, my opponents had a virtual one now. So unless they have specifically Pernicious Deed... Also, we just, you know, LD them. If, if Unless they have a specifically Pernicious Deed, I will probably just, you know, if they do rest, I'll just throw away a Fire Blast. All right, uh, we finally got a W. Feels good, feels good. Though the Rock is, historically, I understand, a pretty good matchup. Now, once again, three lander, but I... Do think that's fine. Treat the village once again. I think again I'm leading on the pup here. And then we can go Grim plus Mog onto Painland. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh that's that's painful. Um that is painful for my opponent there. So here, play Grim, play Fantastic, say go. Do have a clean green source there. Multani's Acolyte. Wow. Cabal Therapy. All right. I mean, if my opponent wants to suck their thing, this works for me. They need to name in the blind. They name Lightning Bolt. Good name. They can. Fl they probably have to flash back and name Bolt Lightning here. 
Like this is a lot of damage, which allows me to get through with three points. Yeah, ball lining is just insane here. Would love to draw Sulfuric Vortex. That's probably my best draw, I would imagine. Wooded Foothills, somehow not as good, but that's okay. Ping you for one, opponent. That's interesting, I've never seen Multani Sacolite out of the rock. If my opponent has a bail off here, we're gonna be in pretty bad shape. Duress. Yeah, I guess I'd probably cash in my four, my four damage here. It's really bad if I draw a three drop, but... I mean, I kind of have to do this. I have to get in while the get in's good. My opponent's hoping to block there. That's probably good for me. Got a little pup. Let's fetch. Play out the pup. And we're just gonna say go. Ship the turn back. So we can deal three to my opponent at a moment's notice. They drew Bailoff. Brutal. Oh, Blastoderm. That one I'm not particularly scared of. Lava man, sir, your face. Awkward. If I swing with both of these, when it blocks the pop, they take one, two, three, four. I don't think it's a good exchange, so I'm just gonna ship the turn back. Need this green lava man, sir, to, to go the distance here. And we really have to dodge a Bailoth. We cannot beat a Bailoth. Rager. Okay, that means we win, right? Is that right? Yeah, my opponent's in a kind of in a pickle over there that they <laughs> they cannot use their blasted arm to actually get in there. Kind of a big deal. Of course, we draw <laughs> two three drops. <laughs> Send it back. We continue trying to dodge Bailoth. Point at a virtual one. That one's not gonna save them. Lava man. All right, they pack it in. Cool. Uh, playing against the rock. Love me some vortex. Love me some price of progress. Do not love me some lava dart. We can cut a land once again. Man, curse crawl continues to be really interesting to me. Uh, gonna go down on bold linings once again. Can maybe cut fanatic. I kind of want the bold linings. Let's just cut a couple of fanatics here. Maybe I should be cutting curse crawl actually. Curse Curl is a recurring source of damage, but not a good one. It's also really mana intensive. Yeah, I think I'd rather have the land than the Curse Curl, actually. What you got, opponent? <laughs> Another three lander. Yeah, sure. Once again, opponent, I'm all to six. Cabal Therapy. I do think it's better for me to lead on... <laughs> Name Jackal Pup. Nice. I do think it's good for me to lead on here. Well, now that I drew the Barbarian Ring, even more so. No recurring source of damage is kind of rough here. Definitely gonna send a lightning bolt to the face there. Uh, one of the main reasons to do that actually is just so I can get it out of my hand. Because it can get hit by this curse spell in my hand and then if my opponent has the rest next turn they get to choose between incinerator or bolt. Uh, so if I play Lava Man here, I allow my opponent to use a removal spell allowing them to use their mana efficiently. So I think I'm just gonna ship the turn here. It may seem pretty awkward but I do think that I don't want to allow my opponent to use a Diabolic Edict, Vendetta, like whatever it is that they have. Oh, Mr. Land Drop. Yeah, that's pretty good for me. Definitely gonna go face there, especially knowing my opponent knows that I have the card. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah. Well, now I am gonna play it out, actually. A little bit of a Numbo here. We're experiencing the Numbo firsthand. Barbarian Ring and the Grim Lava Mancer. See what we've got here. Okay, interesting. So this is only two damage as of right now. I'm not super stoked about that. Deed. Yeah, Deed is fine. So let's just level man face. One is gonna pop. You bring me back up to five. And I can turn on the Bar Baron Ring at any time. That's why it doesn't really matter here. Untap something that does anything. Incinerate. Sure. So opponents at nine. Okay, now this price of progress got a lot better there. Rotlung Reanimator. That's a card. Are they just dead now? Yeah, they're dead. That one point that they took there. So now we just deal exactly 11. I guess that I also had the Barbarian Ring, so they were dead before they cast this. Never mind. I just needed to untap. Actually, I didn't need to untap. So Incinerate Phase, Price of Progress, Fire Blast you. All right, so we want to get continue getting paired against the Rock, apparently. <laughs> we found our good matchup. We found our good matchup. We, we got it now. Perfect. <laughs> Last match... And I guess we keep this. I'm clear. We, I do like that we have access to a one drop, which can potentially uh, deal some recurrent amount of damage. We have a couple of lightning bolts as well. Basic forest. Okay, it's a shock. Mog is getting in there. Hell yeah, let's go. One and fetches. Is this gonna be another enchantress deck? Another enchantress deck, so we're just sending face. Gonna try to deal all of our most damaging spells first. So this is going to be Mock Fennec damage number three. We have eight, nine, 
10, 11. So I'm only missing one mana. Yeah, so my opponent's dead here. So shock face, shock face, untap. Uh, yeah, that's actually, that's more fun to do. It wasn't necessary. I was just going to float mana under Barbarian Ring and then Fire Blast actually gives me threshold for the ring. And that would have been enough to end the game. Okay, so got lucky. My opponent had a little bit of, a, of an awkward draw and we were there. We were able to get there. Uh huh. So now we don't want Lava Dart and I don't think we want Price of Progress. Probably want Sulfuric Vortex. Don't want Furnace. I think I'd rather not have Ball Lining on the draw. Maybe Curse Scroll as a way to get around Circle of Protection over the Ball Linings. So I think this is how I want to sideboard for game number two. We cut one Ball Lining since we're on the draw. We bring in one Price of Progress. Then we cut Lava Dart and Furnace. And we brought in the Curse Scroll as well and the fourth copy of Sulfuric Vortex. I think this is what I want to be doing on the draw. I am not sure, but we will see how this works. Turn one, pop. Yeah, okay. Man, I always keep drawing three landers. <laughs> Turn one, fetch. Opponent already doing my job for me. Wild Grove. Okay, that's not what we want to see. It's a little bit unfortunate that it feels like this deck hinges on just finding its draws in time. Um, sorry, I meant like just the draws lining up in such a way that it doesn't run out of gas, right? There's nothing you can do about it. Our Gothian Enchantress into Wild Growth. Pretty strong one to punch here. So let's play a pop and swing for two. And we cannot beat Confinement. We cannot beat a variety of, of enchantments here. Even something like Elephant Grass would be terrible. And I think, yeah, I think we cannot beat this. So I'm just going to concede um any changes let's cut the price of progress on the play and bring in ball lining i guess maybe vortex is just worse than lava dart honestly since we are gonna have we're gonna have such a short window to do our thing uh man this is rough <laughs> once again three lands i mean i guess i keep this but it's not great like once again there, there's I'm I'm just racing. There's nothing I can do if my opponent has their thing. Like if they if they put their combo together, if they go turn two enchantress into turn three confinement, we just lose. There's nothing we can do about it. So I think we're trying to just like my cards only do what they do, if that makes sense. Like there's no in, in this matchup there's no like playing to the board or anything like that. It's yeah, I'm just gonna be throwing these spells at my opponent's face and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> incinerate face without having access to power class or more anything like that this is just what it is elephant grass okay second enchantress <laughs> good attack by my opponent can we draw a ball lining it would be great to draw a ball lining here no it's a little bit awkward it's actually super awkward drawing jackal pop here means that if i play curse scroll i get a 50 50 chance of it actually doing anything I mean, I, I still think I just go pop into scroll and I probably also shock here. And then next turn I'm going to have, I can have an activation. I put in good pay for the elephant grass. If they do, that's probably great for me. I mean, if they have confinement, they just have confinement, right? Like nothing I can do about that. Seal of cleansing. Okay. This one I can beat. Immediately pop off the vortex. So let's shock face and draw mock fanatic. Okay, so curse scroll face and play fanatic. And now we have to dodge worship or confinement here. We lose it if they have it and we win if they don't. And they have it with elephant grass. Yeah. So yeah, maybe I should have mulligan this hand because it was not particularly great at racing. But once again, I mean it's it's the problem with this deck, right? Like you are so reliant on on your draws there's nothing you can do about it. you have no control over them and like there are certain decks that it just doesn't matter what you do like i would need to have cards like um like anarchy or pyroclasm or something like that in order to deal with a situation like this and even still you're kind of subject to like if my opponent has an enchantress's presence as opposed to a growth enchantress even something like pyroclasm doesn't really stop this like i just die so i need specifically anarchy Obviously, it's unlucky that we played against, you know, uh, this, this, uh, you know, the Enchantress deck twice in a row, you know, that we can complain about that if we really want to, but I don't think it makes too much sense to do so. But uh, yeah, at this point, like, my opponent cannot whiff anymore, so I'm just going to 
concede the game. Okay, so so some wrapping thoughts about this deck. Obviously, like disregard the deck list. You know, like obviously, like this furnace bubble thing was is, is not what you want to be doing. Like this should just be the third bubble, and maybe you know you could improve the deck list a million different ways. Maybe the overloads are bad. Like whatever. Like let, let's ignore that aspect of the equation. I felt like this deck is kind of um i'm trying to find if there's a word to describe it but i'll, I'll just say what, what comes to mind i guess it's just hopeless you know um obviously the deck is extremely powerful i'm not trying to diminish that but it has something where like you are doing your thing and in a variety of matchups obviously we played against enchantress a couple of times but like it doesn't matter what you do. Like, you are, uh, you know, like, th there's a the fantastic article by Mike Flores, of course, uh, called The Three Years. Uh, we didn't really get to, ex we didn't experience that whatsoever. It was maybe because of the matchups that we faced, were, which were very non-interactive. Maybe it was just, like, the hands that I was given. Maybe the hands that I was dealt just meant that, uh, you know, I was forced into just gear one every single time, or, like, more often than not. And then, like, Maybe it may be just an experience. It, it very much may be related to an experience. Maybe a more competent pilot would have uh, probably mulliganed better. It would have probably like sequenced their spells a little bit better or like, pointed at, you know, the face or like the creature that it was supposed to be going at. Um, you know, obviously all of that stuff. I'm just talking about feel. And the reason that I'm talking about feel here is because this was always Mike's complaint about the green-white um, the Oath deck was that you have no agency over your draws. This is exactly how I felt. Every single game, I felt like I, I have no agency whatsoever about over what my cards were doing. Like it just felt like if I if I drew one land too many, I would lose the game, which happened against uh, multiple times throughout this league. If I didn't draw enough lands, I also lost the game. If I had like my if my curve just happened in the wrong order, meaning like I had like not enough one drops and like one too many three drops i also lost the game like all of these aspects of the game which i have no agency besides just mulliganing which i definitely should have done more by the way i am very well aware of, of that kind of stuff but it just felt like i have very little agency over how things went i either i flooded under situ in situations or i did not if everything came together like it did against the rock deck everything was great right but even everything kind of came together but i was one turn too short against enchantress for example if i had a one more turn by my op my opponent just did something which i had no answer to so i was just like well th th this, this is it <laughs> you know uh this is just how this is just how this goes now you know so all of these situations were very awkward so once again biased by the enchantress thing and like how easy my opponent was able to assemble that stuff uh personally having played this matchup from the other side when i was playing the red green ponza uh, deck i played against burn a couple of times and i just had like sphere into a bunch of land destruction spells and i just won very easily from there uh so like all of these things this deck doesn't really have any agency over and you are just hoping that things line up in the best possible way for you and that, you know, you are able to count to 20 uh, and that's just kind of it. You know, you're just hoping that that's the case. So I am not into it. Like, honestly, I did not really enjoy it. Obviously, I'm playing it at not a high level. Obviously, I would imagine it's a lot more enjoyable to play when you're playing it at a much higher level. But I did not enjoy that sense of hopelessness that that i felt throughout uh, this league deck list aside and stuff like that i wanted to like discuss that aspect of me so i don't think i will be trying this deck again maybe i will just to give it another shot maybe i will talk to mike and we will make a video where he actually teaches me how to play the deck but um yeah i was i was not a fan I enjoyed the matches, but I did not enjoy the feel of the deck, if that makes sense. I don't know if it's one of those things where this is uh, this is a tier 1 deck based on medical. This is a tier 1 deck, because I do think this is a very good deck. I do think that this is arguably a tier 1 deck. Uh, but uh, yes, that, that sense of there are certain matchups where if my opponent just has it, they just do, and I there's nothing I can do, was not very enjoyable for <laughs> for me. Especially when I, when I run into that matchup multiple times in the same in, in these six matches that, uh, that that we played so uh that said uh, hopefully you enjoyed the content uh, and if you have any thoughts about the deck that i may be missing please let me know in the comments down below uh but uh, yeah i will see you in the next video folks take care and have a great rest of the day bye bye